What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Logan Built YouTube channel. I apologize for the length of time that it's been since I've uploaded a video. I got the flu that kicked my butt for a few days and then put me behind in the shop. And so I've been playing catch up to get to the point to where I can make some new content for you guys. So a few weeks back or a month or so ago now, I started a discussion about nitrous. Uh, we talked about nitrous bottles in a previous video and I said on the next one we were going to do the topic of nitrous solenoids and plumbing and I had a few of you guys comment that seemed to be really interested in that type of stuff so I'm just going to take a few minutes today and go over a little bit of what you need to know about solenoids, how to choose which solenoids best for what you're doing, and a little bit about actually uh, plumbing the system up. So when you're choosing what you're going to do with a nitrous system, you've already chose what bottle that you're going to run per my last video. And so now you're going to decide what solenoid best fits what you're doing. So the most common solenoids are these little um, Typically, they're called purge solenoids. In some of the smaller nitrous kits, these are your actual main nitrous solenoid. This one here is an adduction solutions purge solenoid. But you can see that it's a rather small solenoid. They're eighth inch MPT in, eighth inch MPT out. And typically, these are around an 093 orifice size internally. So that's really what you need to know when dictating what solenoid that you're going to go with. An O93 is only going to be able to flow as big of an O93 jet. So you can put a 120 jet in this if you want, and it doesn't matter. It's still only going to flow what the solenoid is capable of. So typically, an uh, O93 in a diesel application, uh, that's going to be definitely going to cover your spool up stuff. You're usually not going to use that big of a spool jet, uh, but these are great for spool jets. Uh, they're great for a purge, which is just basically used to get the air out of the nitrous system and to bring your bottle pressure down. But anything larger than really just spooling with it, or if you just have like, say you're just new to nitrous and you're going to go out on the street and you're going to play with it a little bit, and you're just going to stick like a 50 or 60 jet in it just to see what nitrous feels like. Um, these are perfectly fine for that. But anything more than that, where you're using nitrous for down track performance, you're going to want to step up to a bigger solenoid. Now, this solenoid doesn't have the uh, electronic actual solenoid part of it on the top. I have robbed that for use of something. Uh, but this is a nitrous outlet pro mod solenoid. And you can see it is quite a bit, quite a bit larger than the smaller uh, purge solenoid is. And a couple things with this, this one here is actually uh, a 136, if I remember correctly. So this will flow as much as what a 136 or smaller jet will. Uh, so this is where you're gonna run one or multiple of these for down track stuff if you're really trying to use a lot of nitrous to speed the truck up. These are almost always, doesn't really matter the manufacturer brand, uh, quarter inch MPT inlet and then eighth inch MPT outlet, that's pretty standard. And then you'll see that these also have uh, an eighth inch MPT fitting for the purge. That's what the P stands for on it. And so what you can do there is you can basically union a purge solenoid directly to this solenoid so that when you purge it off, you're purging off all of the air between the bottle and this solenoid so you know that your nitrous system is good to go. So they make those in a variety of different sizes. They have uh, 120s, uh, 136s are about the largest common ones. Uh, I know that um, NX, I believe, makes some what they call a 375 solenoid. So those are pretty large solenoids. But these bigger solenoids are gonna be what you're going to use if you are looking to add a couple hundred horsepower to your truck, uh, you're serious about down track drag racing it. And then when it comes to plumbing all this stuff, uh, general rule of thumb always applies. You wanna start with a large line from the nitrous. So the actual bottle to the solenoid on this little one here, you'd be okay with just doing a dash four. And so for reference here, this is what a dash four line is, and this is a dash six line. So you can see that the dash six line 
quite a bit larger than the Dash 4. But since this solenoid can only flow uh, 093, you'd be okay to run, if you just had this one single solenoid, you'd be okay to run this Dash 4 line all the way from your bottle. But if you plumb it that way, you're gonna be limited to really never being able to use more than just one of these. So generally speaking on all of your nitro stuff, it's a good idea to always just start off by using a Dash 6 line. This will, uh, in my opinion, from what I've seen, support two of these smaller solenoids and two of these larger solenoids pretty easily. And then beyond that, if you're wanting to run three or four of these large solenoids down track where you're trying to add four or 500 horsepower worth of nitrous, uh, it's a good idea to start with a dash eight feed line instead of the six, so that way you have enough flow. Nitrous is funny because it's pressurized, but it's not like it has a pump pressure behind it. So it's only going to be able to flow the enough pressure of what's in that bottle. And so what I mean by this is that you can't expect just because you have 1200 PSI of pressure that you're gonna shove 1200 PSI through this into this solenoid with a 136 jet and expect that to work. It will work initially when the solenoid opens, it will, uh, it will flow okay for you know maybe a few tenths of a second, but the bottle pressure is always dropping in the nitrous system. So as you're using the nitrous, you have less and less pressure. That's why the flow really matters. And that's also why you have to use jets instead of uh, things like regulators and needle valves. I've seen some comments about stuff like that. You can't do that because we don't have a constant supply of pressure coming from the bottle. It is constantly diminishing as the bottle pressure goes down. So that's why if you start with, let's say 1200 PSI of bottle pressure, well, it's gonna drop quickly because you have a bunch of pressure in it. As to where if you start with 900 PSI, it's going to drop less during the duration of the run. So it's gonna keep the amount of nitrous going into the engine more consistent. And then when you're plumbing this stuff, you don't ever want to, let's say do a dash six from the bottle and then go to a solenoid and then go from like the solenoid to uh, something else like a jet or say one of these quarter turn valves or something and a dash eight. You never wanna start small and then step up bigger. You should always either keep this consistent throughout, keep it a dash six from the bottle all the way to the solenoid or start, if you know you have to do some sort of stepping involved, make sure that it's always in chronological order as far as from the bottle is your biggest feed line. So let's say you need a dash eight from the bottle, for whatever reason, if you need to step it down, you can. it's okay to step it down to a dash six, and then to the actual jet, uh, if you're gonna run a dash four, that's okay. You just don't ever wanna do a uh, six at the bottle, an eight in the middle, and then a dash four, because when you're changing that pressure, you're basically uh, making it go through pressure chambers, essentially, and you're killing the flow of the nitrous and the performance of the nitrous. So generally, most, most people, unless you're really serious about nitrous and you're probably not watching this video anyways, uh, a dash six line all the way to this solenoid from the bottle is gonna work out just fine for you. And then from the solenoid, you can do a dash four all the way to your nitrous jet. And typically a nitrous jet is going to be set up for a dash three. Uh, so if you, you can do a dash three if you're not using a bunch of nitrous, uh, but most of the time nitrous lines will be made where there'll be a dash four on the solenoid outlet in, and then a dash three on the jet size. And then another thing you wanna keep in mind is how long the line is from the solenoid to your jet is going to change the amount of time that it takes for the nitrous to actually get in the engine. So let's say you mounted this uh, in the cab right next to the bottle, right? And let's say that you had six feet of line getting out to your nitrous jet. Well, when you turn this on, there's gonna be a delay of when the power actually gets to the engine because this nitrous has to go all the way that six foot run 
It then has to go in the engine, it has to burn, has to make more horsepower. So if you are wanting something where you need it to be really snappy, like say uh, your first kit right off the button, typically uh, I like to run that really close to the engine. So that way when you let off the button, it's really snappy. You're gonna wanna keep this line from the solenoid to the jet as short as possible. And then you're gonna wanna put your jet, your nozzle, as close to the cylinder head of the engine as possible. And basically what you need to know is that if you're putting it over by the turbo side, if you're putting your nozzle and your jet over there, that's going to be the slowest reacting because it's gonna to have to go through your intercooler into the head of the, into the intake, into the head. And so that's okay for like, say your second stage. So if you wanna run like one stage uh, uh, right off the button. That one needs to be as close to the intake as possible if, if you want it to react like that. Some situations you don't need the nitrous to react that quick. It's okay to just put everything over there by the turbo. But if you want to slow it down, move it further away from the engine. So pretty simple concept with that kind of stuff. And then as far as jets go, they're very self-explanatory. The larger the number, the larger the orifice size, the more nitrous that you're putting in the engine. You can't really go on the diesel stuff. You can't go by the, the charts that the gas guys have. Uh, they'll say things like, uh, for example, a 40 jet, let's just say, they're gonna say that that's a 70 horsepower jet. Well, that doesn't necessarily equate the same in a diesel from what I've seen. Uh, you could put a 136 jet in, and depending on how the plumbing is, how much fuel that you have present in your engine, how efficient your engine combination is, it's all gonna change how much actual horsepower it is. So really, you don't wanna go by those charts uh, with the diesel stuff. Usually a good rule of thumb for a spool jet is something between a 30 to a 48 range uh, is gonna cover most people's application. Now on spool stuff, you always wanna start conservative. So I would start with a small jet first, bring it in uh, with higher RPM so that way you don't nitrous backfire. But typically most people that are just needing one spool jet are running around that range. Uh, if you're new to nitrous for the first time, as far as down track nitrous goes that you're racing with, uh, starting with a single 60 jet is a good place to start in my opinion. Uh, that's a nice size jet because you don't need a nitrous controller. You can just turn it on uh, directly off the button or off the foot brake. It's not a tremendous amount of nitrous, so it's probably not going to be the difference maker in spinning the tire or not. And then uh, basically just start stepping it up from there. And if you're really serious about nitrous, you might get to a point where you have four 136 jets on and you're spraying six or 700 horsepower worth of nitrous uh, down track. Uh, but it's all a learning curve when, when you're doing this stuff. And so I would recommend that you always start small with nitrous and work your way up. Uh, I don't really wanna get into like AFR and EGT and stuff like that in this video. This is mainly just uh, plumbing wise and solenoid choosing. And then the other thing is, is if you're going to use uh, quite a bit of nitrous, like uh, what, you know, something like my race truck or uh, be well beyond that, because I don't use a lot of nitrous, but if you're gonna have multiple solenoids and you're gonna be changing the bottle often, I would recommend putting a quarter turn valve in line. And so like, this is just a nitrous express uh, valve. There's all kinds of different companies out there that make these, it's simply just a ball valve. And basically this is gonna go in line between your nitrous bottle and your, so basically nitrous bottle, quarter turn valve, and then solenoid over here. And so you're gonna to wanna to put this somewhere to where basically the goal is you're wasting the least amount of nitrous. Uh, if you don't have a quarter turn valve, and let's say you have four foot of line between the bottle and the solenoid, well, every time you change the bottle, you're losing four foot worth of dash six volume of nitrous. So that's money being wasted basically. Uh, so you're gonna to wanna to put this somewhere close to your nitrous bottle. So you can basically just turn that thing off and then you're only wasting a short run from the nitrous bottle to the quarter turn valve, put your new bottle in, open your valve back up, and that's your least amount of waste. So 
that's a pretty good little rundown of nitrous. Uh, the only other thing that I'll add to it is that when you are plumbing this stuff, um, try to avoid 90s like this uh, as much as possible. It's less important if you're just running a single small solenoid. If you're running multiple stages of this where you're using four, five, six, seven pounds of nitrous per pass, it becomes more important. Uh, so if you need to do uh, a 90, I would recommend do a 45 if you can. And then the bigger one is the T-fittings. Uh, the T-fittings really disrupt the flow. So if you can, use like some sort of Y-fitting if you do have to branch off to like, say you have a single feed line that's coming in and then you're gonna send it off to two different solenoids on each side of the truck. Uh, use a Y for that instead of a T. So that's all I got for this one, guys. Just wanted to take a few minutes here with you to discuss a little bit about uh, nitrous solenoid sizes and plumbing and how to choose it for your application. So if you guys like this type of content, click the like button, click the subscribe button, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think of the videos. Let me know what you want to see on the next one. And like always, guys, we'll catch you next time.